Hey there, Salt Strong family. This is Pat Ogletree, and I hope this finds you all happy, healthy, and safe. In this video, I wanted to share a trip that I took down to the Keys this past week. And normally this is a trip where I get about three or four days worth of fishing time in, but the weather had none of it this year. Uh, I was able to get on the water two times for a total of eight hours. So I didn't get a whole lot of fishing in, but I did scout out some new areas that maybe will produce for me next year. And I wanna show you what they are and what I found in these areas. So let's go to the map. I stayed at Boyd's Campground in Key West, which is actually on Stock Island. The first time I went out, it was a couple of days after the wind had blown really, really strong. And I had found this little uh, launch, this little put, put in right here and I decided I was gonna go out there and uh, scout these islands over here. Now, when I got out of the channel, I cut across this flat and I went to this first little break in the, uh, in the flat to that deeper water and just ran parallel to that to see if there was any bonefish down there. And the idea was once I got to the island, I was gonna run along the edge of the island. Now, this was a falling tide, so the thought process was, I had bonefish on the brain just to let you know. Uh, the thought process was that when the water got low, they would stay in this deeper area and then maybe they would cruise along that shoreline and I could pick some up there. Well, there was nothing in this area. Matter of fact, I didn't see anything over here until I got to these cuts in the island where there was maximum current flow. No bonefish, it was your normal uh, type of flats fera in the Keys. Uh, lots of barracuda, lots of mangrove snapper, and a lot of smaller sharks that were feeding along the edges of the grass line. Now, the smaller sharks were great, they were fun, but the problem was I got a little uh, too fixed on them and I went through every single power prawn I had on me except for one. So I know if I kept this up, I wasn't even gonna have a power prawn to throw at those bonefish that I've been looking for for the past couple of years. So I stopped targeting these sharks and moved on. I went down this island over here, Half Moon Key. Uh, I worked the whole way around it over to the point and even around this little point here. And I found nothing. It was, it was an absolute dead zone. There was no bait, no fish, no signs of predators. So I cut back over to this island uh, all across this flat again, Nothing, not, e not even stingrays, nothing was on this. Uh, didn't find anything. So went back to the cut, sure enough, those same sharks were still there. Uh, didn't want to lose any more tackle, so I left them alone. Uh, went back around that island again, and now by this time, uh, I started out as an outgoing tide, and now it's an incoming tide. And uh, I thought maybe that might change things up a little bit. I fished that whole island again and still uh, didn't see anything. So I'm gonna check this one off. Uh, for whatever reason on this trip, it was an absolute dead zone. So I don't know if I'm gonna go back there and, and spend time there. Uh, so that was the first day. Now, the second day, I should say the second time I got out there because it was a few days later, uh, because between the wind and the rain, I couldn't get out there. I had a two hour break in the rain at the end of, I think it was the fourth or fifth day I was there. So staying at the campground, I decided that I'm gonna uh, launch real quick. I launched from this little, uh, this little launch here and I was shooting straight acro across the channel and I got to this island right here. Now, this the ship wasn't here uh, then, they had already moved it out, but this was an outgoing tide. And what that did was, when the tide was coming dr directly out of the north to the south, it hit the point of that island and it created an eddy there. And there was all kinds of life there. Uh, I was catching all kinds of snapper. There was, uh, there was the mangrove snappers, there were some schoolmasters in there. Uh, and these were legal size, so if I wanted to, I probably could have parked there for an hour or two and uh, limited out on snapper and had a nice dinner, but again, still having bonefish on the brain, I wanted to check out this flat that I had saw on the map. And that's this flat right here. In particular, the two spots that I wanted to fish were these two fingers that you see, these two cuts that come in on the flat. Now again, this is an outgoing tide, so what was happening was the water was falling off the flats and there was not enough water on the top of the flat to, for the fish to be, so they were slowly getting pushed down. The idea was when, they, when the water got low enough, they would get pushed out into these cuts and they would stay along this edge. So I started on the outside of the edge and I worked my way in, just, just pulling along and paddling along real slow to see if I can find anything. And sure enough, I found two lone bo bonefish, uh, but unfortunately, the way I saw them was I spooked them off. Uh, if you've never looked for bonefish on the flats, they are the most camouflage things I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so basically I saw a dust off and the bonefish as it was leaving. 
but that solidified that my thought process was in the right place. So I had scouted that area. I figured I was gonna come back the next day and uh, hit that up on a high on an incoming and an outgoing uh, to see if I can, I can find those fish again. But again, weather having the, the way that it was, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to get out again the rest of the trip. So with that being said, uh, if I was to come back again, I'm definitely uh, checking out that particular island, or that, excuse me, that particular flat. And then the one place that really caught my eye that I didn't get a chance to go to, it was in my, my pre-planning, was it was kind of the same situation. It was a flat that had these same little, uh, these same little cuts that came off of it. And I wanted to park the kayak on there and see if they, would, they were going to come off of that on a falling tide. Uh, but again, that's going to have to wait till next time. So if you were to come to the island and you're doing some camping there and you have, uh, you know, you're stuck, say you're in the same situation, wind's too bad, you can't get your boat out there. It's actually not a bad idea. You can still have some fun uh, fishing for uh, the snapper along the, uh, the points of that island or actually any of the bridges too. You can just set out a chum block and catch all the fish that you want. But don't think that you can't get into the bonefish because there are some close by. Uh, trust me, I'll be back there uh, next year looking for these things. So I wish I had more information with you and more exciting pictures to show you of fish caught, but uh, this is more of a scouting report. So I appreciate you watching this. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, when you're out there, please pick up after yourself. And if you have to, please pick up after others. And until next time, keep those rods bent and those drags screaming. Have a great day. Bye.